Let's start our study of anatomy and physiology by taking a minute to think about what those words mean. Anatomy is the study of the structure of something. So we'll be studying the structures of the human body, all the way from the atomic level up to the whole organ systems. Physiology is the study of the function of organisms, how they do the things they need to do to survive. Let's consider the sorts of things that living things have to be able to do. One of the main characteristics of living things includes being made of cells. This one's actually a little bit debatable among some scientists as to whether being made of cells should be considered a characteristic of all living things or not when we start getting into the realm of things like infectious proteins or viruses. But for our purposes, living things that we are studying are made of cells. Another characteristic of all living things is that they metabolize. That means they take in and use nutrients and energy. Our cells take in energy in one form and then break down molecules to release that energy so that it can be used in a different form to build other molecules or to carry out many of the other things that our cells need to do that take energy. A lot of the energy released by metabolism is needed by cells to maintain homeostasis. To maintain homeostasis means to maintain a constant internal environment. There are a lot of things inside the cell that have to be maintained. Some cells have to be kept at a certain temperature, certain salt levels. At a more organismal level, humans have to maintain an internal temperature. We have to maintain certain blood pressure and certain nutrient levels in order to be able to survive. All of that is homeostasis, maintaining an internal environment. In addition to maintaining their internal environment, living things also have to be able to respond to the environment. They detect a stimulus and then have to activate mechanisms to respond to that stimulus. For example, you touch something hot, your body activates mechanisms to move you away from that something hot. Humans have the ability to respond to all sorts of stimuli. We can respond to sound, to things that we see, to things that we touch, and a lot of things happening internally that we aren't even conscious of. The next characteristic of living things is growth and development. Living things grow and they develop. That means they change over their lifespan. I'm not exactly the same now as I was when I was born because I developed and grew over my lifespan. Ultimately, for most living things, the process of growth and development leads to the ability to reproduce. Reproduction is an important characteristic of all living things because it allows a living thing to make more of its own kind. Humans reproduce to make more humans. Evolution is a characteristic of living things that goes a little bit beyond the scope of this course because evolution is not looking at the change in a single living thing or a single organism over time. Evolution is looking at changes in species over time. How does an entire species evolve or change over many generations. We can see the results of evolution in human populations. For example, the evolution of lactose tolerance. The ancestral state of humans is to be lactose intolerant, to not consume lactose, the sugar in milk, as an adult. However, due to changes in the human population over time, now a large section of the world's population is able to comfortably consume lactose as adults. That's a change in the population over time or an example of evolution. The last characteristic of living things I want to talk about is organization. Living things are structured in a very ordered and organized way, all the way from the smallest atoms to an entire person. And that's what we'll get to next. Taking a closer look at the organization of living things, we start with the atom. Atoms are the smallest unit of matter. They make up the individual elements that create all of the structures that we need to be alive. So we start with atoms. Atoms join together to form molecules. When you have two or more atoms that are joined by a chemical bond, that's what gives you a molecule. There are lots and lots of different types of molecules. Things like water or carbon dioxide or proteins, DNA, fats, all of these are examples of molecules, atoms that are joined together by bonds. 
Some molecules function fairly independently, but other molecules join together to form the parts of cells, or the organelles. So that's our next level of organization, is the organelle, or the parts of cells. Things like ribosomes, or membranes, or mitochondria are all parts of cells that are formed by molecules working together. Once we get all of those different organelles working together, we have a cell. A cell is called the basic unit of life because it's the smallest unit we have that can carry out all of the functions of living things that I talked about earlier. But obviously humans are made from more than a single cell, so we have to start putting cells together. We put cells together to form tissues. So we can put cells together to form epithelial tissues or cells together that form muscle tissue or nervous tissue. And the tissues we then put together to form organs. When we have different sorts of tissues working together, we have organs that can carry out specific functions. Things like the heart that pushes blood around the body, or the liver that stores nutrients and removes toxins, or the lungs that allow us to exchange gases between the air and our blood so that we can get oxygen to our cells. All of these are organs that are made of tissues. The organs then work together in groups to make organ systems. When we take the heart along with the blood vessels in the blood, we have the circulatory system responsible for circulating gases and nutrients and wastes throughout the body. When we take the kidneys and join it with the bladder and the ureter and the urethra, we have the components of the urinary system that we need to remove waste from the blood and remove that from the body. So organ systems are made of organs that are working together for particular functions. And only when we put all of the different organ systems together can we finally make an organism or a human.